Greetings, mortals. Today, we talk about the first step you should take when starting a new campaign. Welcome to Tabletop Sandbox, where we talk about all things TTRPG. I am the one. Don't weigh a ton. Don't need a gun to get respect up on the street. Also known as Harrison Tar. So, you've gotten a group of friends together, and they've told you they want to play D&D. &D. You, of course, are the DM, because nobody else wants to, and also, hopefully, you love it. So, what's the first step? First, you have to choose a campaign, but how do you do that? And once you do, how do you let your players know what this whole thing is going to be about? To set their expectations before you actually jump in to play? Well, here's how with a campaign primer. But before we get into what's actually in the primer, let's talk about choosing a campaign. My personally favorite method is if I'm not totally sure what type of campaign I wanna run, I pick two or three and I write a quick synopsis of what that campaign would be like. This is a brief introduction, hopefully not much longer than a few paragraphs, that tells your players about the setting, about the genre, and about the general vibe of your campaign. Is it going to be low fantasy, high fantasy? Is it going to be set in a European analog, the classic idea of fantasy set forth by Papa Tolkien? Is it going to be something inspired by a movie or TV show or book you've read? Is it going to be something completely wackadoo like Spelljammer that you need to really let your players know what they're getting into? And perhaps you even include a little bit of detail about the specifics of what they'll be doing, what the central tension is. And if you don't know what that means, keep your eyes peeled for a video coming soon. When I've done this before, I picked three different regions within my homebrew world that I really hadn't developed much about any of them yet, and I presented them to my players with a general description of the vibe of each of those, what kind of game it would be. One of them was in a European analog that would include a lot of politics, knights and chivalry and the like. One of them was in an area of the continent that was kind of laid to waste by demons, and there are still demons from a long ancient war roaming the wilderness. And society is constrained to a few bastions, walled cities that keep the demons out. And adventure, of course, can happen inside those cities, but mostly happens outside. And one of them was set in a massive metropolis that was ruled by the iron fist of the government who controlled strictly all magic. So I kind of floated these three ideas and I let my player characters pick one of them. But here's a word of warning. Do not offer to run a campaign that you don't actually want to run. Don't come up with options just because you think you should, because if you have one in mind that you're really excited about and the other two you just kind of threw together as a last minute thing, don't even bother with those. If only one campaign idea interests you, just offer to run that one campaign. Now onto the actual campaign primer, the hopefully brief document that you send out to your players for them to read over before they make characters for your campaign. And that's really what the purpose of this campaign primer is, to help them create characters and even write their backstories in a way that is going to fit into the world that you are already preparing. This way you avoid players coming in with backstories that completely contradict some of the truths about your world, and you give people inspiration to make their characters based on some of the ideas that you include in your world already. As a GM who likes world building a lot, that is one of the most satisfying things for me, when people take an idea I have and then play off it to create their character, or write something into their backstory that I didn't even know about before, but fits well into the world because of what they knew. The first thing you want to include in your campaign primer is the history, or at least a brief introduction to what the world or setting actually is. For my examples in the campaign primer, I'm going to be pulling from one I made for a desert fantasy setting called The Ancient Wastes. To open this campaign primer, 
timer up, I give a very brief but vast overview of the history of not just this continent, but the world. I give about a paragraph description of three ages that are kind of the main defining ages of this world. And the most recent one, the Age of Clarity, began over a thousand years ago. But it's important for the players to know how things got to be the way they are. Or maybe it's not too terribly important, but it's an easy way for them to understand it without kind of explaining every little thing to them. You do not want to include any huge lore dumps in this campaign primer. That's not what it's for, and odds are your players are gonna lose interest, at least some of them. In fact, imagine that your players are gonna take a few things from this campaign primer, but don't expect them to have it memorized. They're only gonna read it once or twice before making their character and just pluck a few ideas that they like out of it. Next thing you wanna include in your campaign primer is the things about the world that anybody would know, kind of general knowledge. This can be things like laws, though really you don't want to include a list of laws unless there are some things in those laws that your players may not expect. A big part of the ancient wastes is that it is run by a theocracy ruled by the three chosen races that the gods of the dragon, the hawk, and the caracal sent down to aid the rest of the common races in their struggle to survive after there is an apocalyptic war on the world. One of the laws that I include is that there is absolutely no intimate fraternization between the chosen races and the common races permitted upon punishment of death. Then you also want to cover some of the major cultural details if they are different from what they might expect from a standard European analog fantasy game. This includes things like religion, if that's important, a pantheon of gods, perhaps. And it can also include things like what form of government rules this? Is it a theocracy? A republic? Is it just an emperor? And under that emperor, who rules kind of the individual cities? Are there governors? Are they vassals of him? Are they lords? And what does that mean for the player characters? What are they going to be dealing with when they come into a port of civilization? And again, only include details that the players wouldn't assume are true. So you want to cover things that are unexpected, not things that are expected. You don't want to drone on and on about things that your players could have guessed. And also, there's always a chance to clarify things later. Next, you want to include the role or place of peoples or races in this campaign setting. First, you want to handle things like, are there any non-playable races? I made it so that none of the chosen races are playable by PCs. I also made it so that dwarves are not playable because in my world, dwarves are much more moist than typical. They're not just short, stout humans. They have to live either underground or in the Arctic tundra, and so the middle of a desert is not a place where you're going to find dwarves. Secondly, you want to handle if there are any mechanical changes to the races that you're allowing your characters to play, or offering any new or custom sub-races. But perhaps most importantly, you want to cover each race's place in society. These are the things that your players wouldn't necessarily know when they look at elves, but you want to inform them that, hey, in this world, elves don't actually live longer than humans. They live about the same. They don't live a thousand or thousands of years, according to the official rules. They actually only live 300. I basically go through and give a brief paragraph to every playable race, and I describe what role or place these races generally find themselves in in the society of the ancient wastes. For example, elves have become the utmost craftsmen of artisanal trades in the ancient wastes. But gnomes are responsible for the most advanced technology that you find in the setting. Finally, you want to go over any factions, people groups, or notable NPCs that the players should know about going into your campaign. If this whole area is ruled by a notorious king, you want your players to know about this king and maybe even write him into their backstory before they come to the table. You don't want to say, Great King Alabacazandar, and they be like, who is that? I've never heard of him. If 
it would make sense for everybody to have heard of him. You would want to note the non-playable factions that are famous that the players might have just heard about, but also the playable ones that they might choose to become a part of. In this campaign setting, one of the ones that a couple players chose to be a part of is outside of the quote-unquote civilized cities where the humans and elves and halflings live are tribes of sand sailor nomads. And these sand sailor nomads traverse the desert on sand skiffs that are powered by subtle wind magic. And yes, that is an idea I stole directly from Avatar The Last Airbender. And because this was a 5e campaign, I suggested a couple backgrounds to go with each faction if they decided to make their character a part of it. And after you've listed all of the pertinent information, you want to include any other things that the players might need to know before creating their character or jumping into your campaign. If you have a specific or homebrew method of stat generation, or you're deciding which level to start at. I know a lot of campaigns start at level three. If you want them to buy their equipment rather than use the starting equipment, or you're giving a certain number of magic items to them to start with, that would all be good things to include here in your campaign primer, as well as including any house rules that your players may not be aware of. And finally, when you send this out, you want to be very inviting of questions that people might have and be open to ideas that they might suggest. However, if you have a set idea of your world and your player wants to play a character that directly clashes with that, just say no. It'll be easier and better for everyone in the long run. If you'd like to look over this campaign primer that I keep referencing, I will include it in the description. This is a great way to curry some favor with your players, and I hope you think about using one the next time you start a campaign. Good night, mortals.